everyone, and welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon War. Last time we left off, uh, angels are hunting us, we chose Shadow as our teacher, and we basically molested Diana. So, let's continue. I woke up in James's arms once more, slowly blinking the sleep from my eyes as my vision focused on his chest. As I stared, I vaguely pictured the cross burn over his skin, but was relieved to find no such thing there in reality. It had been just a dream. I looked up to see James smiling down at me softly before he kissed my forehead. Good morning. Did you have a good rest? I remembered the nightmare and suddenly became unsure of whether or not the truth was something he wanted to hear. I did rest, but I did wake up from that nightmare during the night. Was it worth telling him? I had a nightmare again. I couldn't lie, I shook my head and the smile on James's face disappeared. As much as it would make him unhappy, it was better to let him know the results of his spell. I wasn't attacked by angels or anything, but you were. I was. I ran my hand over his chest, imagining the burn from the dream emblazoned on his skin. You were bolted to a wall and had a cross cut into your chest. It was burning and you were arguing with a voice in the air. Cross. So it was an angel's work. Why, though? James closed his eyes and thought, trying to figure out why himself, but as he opened his eyes to look at me, his smile did not return. The spell I cast to protect you placed an image of me in your mind, like a guardian. If they came, my spell would have forced them to attack me instead. Luckily, it worked. James ran his hand over my cheek. However, you still went through a nightmare. For that, I am sorry. It's okay. No, no, don't be. You protected me. So the dream was part of his spell. I felt relief that it worked. The side effect was an image of James being hurt. At least it wasn't actually him. I ran my hand over James's cheek, smiling softly. Thank you. At last, James's smile reappeared before he softly took my hand and kissed my palm. All for you, love. A knock on the door, however, interrupted our moment together. Where is it? Diana. I have food for you both. I looked to the door as James called out for her to enter. The door opened to reveal Diana with two plates of food, the same meal we had the day prior. She walked over and handed the plates to us before stepping back. I assume that you both had a good rest. Yes, actually. We've worked out the angel problem for now. Diana raised her eyebrow, crossing her arms, but nodded in reply. Looking at Diana, however, I could see a small, dark circles beneath her eye. She did not rest last night? Question it. Diana, are you okay? You look worn out. Diana stared at me for a moment before shaking her head. I didn't get much rest. I spent most of the night dealing with some uninvited guests. Should we be worried? No, I have everything under control. A part of me didn't believe her, but I nodded, uh, nodded, nodded regardless. If she didn't wish to talk about it, then it was better not to ask about it any further. Diana turned on her heel and began to walk out of the room, but she stopped at the archway and looked back to me. If any angels come your way again, tell me. With that foreboding warning, Diana left, leaving James and I unable to reply. What could we say to that? James had already placed a spell on me to protect me, and he seemed to be just fine. We would be fine. James and I ate our food before separating to train. As soon as I arrived in the library to train, I stopped when I heard Diana's voice erupt from it. Where is the flower? I believe you were already informed of what happened to it. Do not tell me you are blind to its significance. I peeked into the room, confused as to what was going on. Diana, with a face full of irritated and anger, leaned against the mantle of the fireplace as shadow poured over his scrolls as he usually did. He didn't even look at Diana as he spoke, disinterested in the topic of conversation. It wasn't needed for the gate spell, so it was deemed unnecessary. It was tossed out as a result of that judgment. You do realize that flower is one of very few out there in this plane, correct? And this should bother me. Why? I could practically cut through the tension in the air with a knife. The way they spoke to each other spoke volumes of their disdain for one another. Why was that the case, though? They were working for the same cause. Diana almost snarled with surprise. It should bother you, because as a consequence of your thoughtless action, I am putting your scout in charge of finding another. Well, damn. And why would I allow this? 
Good question. I watched as a dark purple and black flame slowly emanated from Diana's body, causing Shadow to look over. Straight up and taking Because aside. while you are their commanding officer, I am the head of this entire rebellion, and my orders outrank yours. Okay. I Diana glared hard at Shadow, but I could feel the intensity of her glare from the doorway, making a hard shiver run up my spine. Where did this Diana come from? I recognized her in tone, but didn't want to imagine that this was the real her. As Shadow finally sighed, the tension died a bit. As you wish. Another will be found without delay. Diana's aura faded as she let out a sigh, calming down her angry display. Something was wrong with Diana presented herself. Still, she altered her tone. Thank you. I appreciate it. Shadow only stared coldly at Diana as she pushed herself away from the fireplace and walked towards the door. Panicked to be found out from eavesdropping, I stepped out of my hiding spot as if I had just arrived, looking into the room. Diana stopped at the sight of me, but closed her eyes and continued walking, arching around me to get by. Excuse me. I watched as Diana left before walking into the library, now concerned. You know, you are a terrible spy. Huh? I looked at Shadow, realizing he knew that I had been listening in to what had happened and grimaced crap. I rubbed the back of my head, trying to calm myself with the embarrassing nerves racing in my head. Sorry, I was curious about what was happening. It's nothing to be concerned with, just a waste of time, really. I expect you not to do that again. You understand? You got it, coach. It was better not to question it for now. I would eventually learn, but if Shadow wasn't going to tell me now, there was no way I would be able to force an answer out. Shadow looked to me, observing for a moment, before nodding and turning from the table. Well then, shall we begin? I nodded, prepared to face whatever he had in store for me. What took me off guard was someone coming up suddenly behind me and placing a knife at my throat. What? Dead. I froze. What did she mean? Shadow crossed his arms, raising an eyebrow. Jama, a little too early. She's so fucking cute! As the person released me and moved the knife away from my throat, I turned with a hard glare to see the cloak woman who had been talking to Diana before. She obediently looked to Shadow. I apologize, sir. Back to your place. <clears throat> Shama bowed and quickly formed herself into a shadow, fading into the ground. I instinctively began to follow suit, but Shadow cleared his throat. Pay no mind to that. No, no, you can't just say that. What was that? I had a knife held to my throat without any warning. I was not prepared, and while that may have messed up, may, wow, I can't read today, may have been some messed up point about war and not being prepared, Shadow was watching and could have stopped it. The only thing that ran through my mind was how my body suddenly became filled with adrenaline. Shadow stared blankly at the question and at me. A misfired trap. Shama is meant to surprise attack you after I teach you your next lesson. Obviously there was a miscalculation. But that'll be fixed and done properly, after the lesson is given. But now I know about it. I understood, wanting to be ready the next time it happened, but something caught my attention, drawing my focus away from his words. As I stared at the shadow, I faintly noticed his hair swaying slightly in the air on his head. What the? There was no wind in the room. How was it moving? I focused my attention on his hair, wondering what it was doing as shadow raised an eyebrow at me. What are you staring at? I shook my head and avoided it. Why was I so focused on his hair? It was hair. As I thought, however, his ponytail suddenly began to move, like a hand tapping its fingers on Shadow's shoulder and on his waist. Whoa! I jumped back, pointing at his hair and earning a smug smile from Shadow. Why is your hair doing that? As Shadow suddenly glared at me, I tensed up. Are you more interested in the hair or in your training? Both. I kept my mouth shut. I wasn't going to get anywhere but by getting distracted. Just like my ugh, like with my curiosity with Diana, if this was another lesson then Shadow was teaching me properly. Still my curiosity pecked wildly at me, wanting me to desperately ask about it. Ask about it. Shadow raised an eyebrow. I was fearful that he was going to dismiss me afterwards, but I desperately needed to know about the hair. It was just too interesting to ignore now. The ends of Shadow's hair gently moved up in the air, waving their fingers at me, like they were dancing over piano keys. Let me ask you this, Yuna. What would you be willing to trade your soul for? 
That's a tough question. My soul? I stared at Shadow slightly dumbfounded. He, he traded his soul for his hair? Now that my focus was on it, the strands of hair were pitch black. Not even light could pierce through them or highlight the strands. How was that possible? Shadow lifted a hand and ran his fingers over his front ponytail, combing through the darkness. For me, the answer was simple. To control fear. That made absolutely no sense. How does your hair make you control fear? Shadow gazed into my eyes before sighing and lowering his hand. However, as he did, his own shadow slowly rose behind him as if it were a being itself and stood silently. The shadow's hair, however, danced around him, revealing not two, but at least ten hands flaying from his hand, head, waving through the air in snake-like movements. I felt frightened, just staring. The shadow quickly detached itself from its master and began to sprint around the room, taking out every light source and completely covering the room in darkness. What the? It was a pitch black in the room, not even the light of the hallway could be seen. I couldn't spot shadow or his shadow anywhere, causing me to stand still in utter fear. As hands began to crawl along my body and wrap around my arms and torso, I screamed and began to flail, feeling them completely coil around me like snakes. Soon I was entrapped in a tight embrace of shadow. To completely control darkness is to control fear. To control fear is to control life itself. It isn't enough to simply hold that much. I get it! Let me go, please. I was frightened to the core. I didn't want to be in this anymore. I was excited about learning about dark magic, but this had qu quickly become a power I was fearful of. At last, I reappeared in the room and Shadow stood before me. Why is my phone freaking out? Okay. Shadow stood before me, arms crossed with a small smirk on his face. His two ponytails settled onto his body, resetting. Resettling? from what they had done. As I no longer felt tied up, there is a bug in my room. I shook out my arms and wrapped themselves around me, trying to calm down. Are there any more questions you intend to waste my time with? Plenty. I became fearful of this man. He was my trainer, but at the same time, he wasn't afraid to make me fear him. It may have just been darkness, but what if he pulled a knife on me like Shama did? I would have been killed in the cover of darkness without any way to fight back. I shook my head, letting out a shaky breath. No, sir. I had to pay attention. No more distractions. I had to focus on the task ahead, or else I would open myself up for another unpleasant surprise. Sorry, I'll pay attention. Shadow nodded, rolling her shoulders and forming a pure black dagger in his hands. As he looked at me, I understood what he wanted me to do, having watched his hand carefully. He was not one to actually talk me through anything. I focused on my hand, trying to imagine a dagger forming within it. I ra- oh shit. No! I him to form a shadow across my palm, knowing that I needed the darkness to help give it shape. Slowly, but eventually, the hilt of a dagger formed in my hand, allowing me to grasp it. The blade quickly jutted out of the end, finally completing its formation, before I lowered it to my side and looked up at shadow. Become aware of your surroundings. Your opponent is using the shadow plane, so you're at the disadvantage. But you can still defend yourself, as long as you pay attention. That was what my attention was so- that was why my attention was so important. I mentally wanted to slap myself for letting my curiosity take hold of me. Now was not the time to mope, however. I had to focus. I nodded before looking around, trying to figure out how I was going to phone Shama and defend myself before she got to me and killed me. I wasn't sure how the shadows got around in the other plane, but I was going to find out. I looked to the ground, not seeing anything pass by me, then looked to the light sources. If I remember anything from the day before, it was that you needed to control the light to distract your target or protect your shadow from being used. I held my breath, trying to focus on the lights versus hearing my breathing whisper through the room. I wasn't going to let her take advantage of me. Suddenly I felt a he- I faintly- Hear a flame whip to the side, causing me to turn and see Shama rushing at me with her knife. I quickly parried, pushing her back. Good. As quickly as she could come, Shama vanished once again to hide. I could tell I was going to get a workout. Soon enough, she began to attack in plain sight, turn the room dark, even ease my shadow against me. I had to maneuver around it all. I continued to fend off her attacks for the entire day until I was excused for the room, to my room for the night. 
The day at last ended, and I wound up slowly walking towards my room. I was tired and ready to hit the pillow, but as I entered, I stared at who was there waiting for me. Sarah? Sarah stood in the middle of the room, staring hard at me as if I had done something wrong. Do you know what a stone destiny is? Sure don't. A stone destiny? I had never heard of such thing. Did it have something to do with the angels? Angels. I tilted my head, making Sarah sigh and lower his head. A stone destiny binds a person's entire life towards a specific direction. It could be for good, it could be for evil. However, when a stone destiny is set, almost nothing can stop Got it from taking its course. Sorry, that was loud. Um, yeah, let me just clean that up. Um, why are you bringing this up? Sarah looked up at me and closed his eyes, resolved in explaining to me whatever was on his mind. What he told me, however, shocked me. I believe that your fiancé is locked in a stone destiny. What? That made no sense. James was locked in a stone destiny. What did that have to do with anything? Where did this come from? As Sarah watched my expression, he continued to there speak. There is only one way to forge a stone destiny. By making a deal with angels. If someone is willing to give angels something worthy, the angels can set and seal someone's life as if in stone. Oh. If anything threatens to destroy that destiny, the angels step in. That was it. That was why the angels were after me. If James was tied to a stone destiny, then the only reason they were attacking me was because I was in the way of his fate. How could that be, though? What was his destiny? To become the next demon lord? Something in my mind clicked at the thought. Of course, that had to be it. I had taken James away from his destiny and was about to marry him. Of course they would be after me. I sat on my bed, shocked and astonished at the news. I felt somewhat relieved that James and I had found a way to stop them, but I still felt the weight of the new information sinking into my thoughts. Sarah stopped, stepped towards the door and closed it, looking at me. Breaking a stone destiny is nearly impossible. Nearly. I looked up at him, anxious gro anxiousness growing as he repeated the word. There is a way to fix this and set James free? Then how can we set him free from it? By giving him enough energy to do so himself. I stared. It made sense, but giving him energy meant probably sleeping with him. I didn't have much of a problem with it, but sex wasn't something I wanted to do just because it had to be done. Girl, get over it. It was be better to make love when the people involved were in the mood to do so rather than because they had to. Sarah turned back to the door. He is a powerful incubus, but he isn't powerful enough to break through his destiny unless you help him. Before he left, however, I stopped him. Something seemed off with Sarah being the one to tell me. Sarah, why are you telling me instead of Diana telling me? She isn't aware of it. Not many demons know of it or even believe it to be an actual occurrence. Then how do you know about it? Sarah seemed to stand still, letting silence linger in the room. The room began to feel off as Sarah stood in place. I had felt this feeling before, but I couldn't pin it down where. Finally, Sarah slowly turned his head to me, causing me to silently gasp at what was revealed. In his gold eyes were crosses glowing a dark black where his pupils were. The feeling of feathers once again danced around me, causing me to quiver slightly. Does that answer your question? I nodded slowly, but frightfully. Sarah was an angel? How? He looked like a demon. No one mentioned him being anything close to an angel other than him using holy magic. Did Diana not know either? How was this hidden? Sarah closed his eyes and relaxed a bit as he pressed his lips into a fine I love line. my lady. I would follow her to the ends of the five worlds if she demanded it of me. To see the man she was bound to wed here, locked by a destiny that would have taken my love away long ago. It's maddening. The longer he stays here, the more dangerous his destiny becomes. I've seen visions of what would come to pass if his destiny is fulfilled, and I will do everything to make sure that doesn't happen. I could see the jealousy in Sarah's eyes once again. Something burned heavily in Sarah's gaze as, and didn't dare fade away as he gripped his spear in a white-knuckled grip. My lady is a queen deserving of the world, not a harem girl for him to ravage in a cage. Memories of the nightmare I had long ago flickered in my head. Diana had been in a cage beside me. Did Sarah's eat the same thing? 
I didn't get the chance to ask. Sarah relaxed a bit and glared at me. I could feel a shiver rake up my spine as his words shook me to my core. Do not speak of what I am to anyone, or I will set your destiny to die at your husband's hand. Well, damn, Sarah. Spiteful. Without letting me reply, Sarah returned and left the room, leaving me alone to absorb what had happened. I felt the air in the room slowly drift back to normal, but I felt it nowhere close to it. How was this happening? Why was this happening? Everything began to clash in my head, causing it to pound heavily in confusion and stress. My thoughts were interrupted as the door opened again, revealing James. Well, are you alright? James... Get up and kiss him! I couldn't control myself. I needed some relief from this entire situation, and I usually found it in James's embrace and against his lips. I stood from the bed and walked over to him, wrapping my arms around him and pulling him into a kiss. James, taken by surprise, gasped against my lips before wrapping his arms around my waist and kissing me back. I let my mind sink into a blank state as I drowned myself in the kiss between us. However, I knew partly why I was doing this, to give James energy. If energy was what he needed to fight this, then I was willing to feed it to him. James pulled away slightly and looked down at me. As he looked into my eyes, he stared in soft surprise and confusion. Love, is everything alright? This was far enough. I was fine with where we were, and I had given him a good amount of energy. There was no need to go any farther than that. I slowly pulled away, staring up at James lovingly. As he took in the situation, he smiled curiously at me. I... I assume you had a good day? I just missed you, that's all. I did miss him. A day without him was like waiting for him to get off of work. When he returned, my world felt a little bright bit brighter. Besides, it was an excuse to give him energy without him worrying. James, taking time to calm down, chuckled and laid his forehead against mine. I love you. I love you too. We went to bed that night in each other's arms, enveloped by the peaceful dark of slumber. To my surprise, no nightmares came that night. I woke up that morning by myself alone in bed. James was nowhere to be found, but I had assumed he was out training. We were getting closer and closer to the day where when we were going into battle with the demon lord, so it made sense for him to be on top of his training. However, I couldn't exactly stop the feeling of loneliness rushing through me. I at least wanted to see him off, but I had to understand this was preparation for a war. The reward was me going home, after all. I stretched and rubbed my neck, massaging out the tired soreness from sleep in my body. Day five in the demon world. Had it really been that long? I wanted to imagine it like a vacation, but the situation was the polar opposite. This was a week away from my normalcy, despite it being barely normal in the first place. Besides, I was marrying a demon. There was nothing normal about that. How much time had gone by in the human world? Were people worried about me now? Questions plagued my mind for a brief moment before I let out a sigh of defeat. I guess I'll figure it out when I get home, whenever that is. Don't worry, darling. You'll be home soon enough. Thanks, Diana. I turned my head to see Diana standing by the door with a plate of warm pancakes. I would never figure out how Diana managed to make them, but staring at the plate made my mouth water. Something warm. Here. Diana walked over and handed me the plate and utensils to eat with. I didn't even ask to start eating. The first bite was heavenly, and the expression on my face apparently made Diana chuckle. I'm glad you enjoy it. I blushed and swallowed the bite full in my mouth before looking up at Diana. Thanks! You're welcome. Diana chuckled as I continued to eat happily. As the thought crossed my mind, I couldn't help but look up and observe Diana as I ate what she made for me. Diana really was doing a lot to help me get home on top of having a war to deal with. I could tell that she had her reasons for doing so, but it seemed like there was a lot of work she had to do and I felt a little sorry for her. Still, I was thankful that she was willing to help me leave this world for my own. Diana smiled a bit before looking away and sighing. What was on her mind? Dear, may I ask you something? <laughs> sure. What was Diana curious about? Diana turned her head to me and stared with a blank expression. I was a little concerned as to why I received such a stare, but I mentally shook it off. Have you truly dealt with the angel problem? I haven't heard any word from them since last night, so I assume you have. But I need to be sure. 
I stared at her for a moment, taking in her question. I really wasn't sure how to answer because it wasn't clear if we managed to go away from the angel's sights or not. They didn't invade my dreams last night, that was for sure. But could that even be considered taking care of the problem? I took a breath before answering, going with my gut. I don't know. I truly didn't know. All I knew was what Sarah told me, but I knew better than to tell Diana that just from what Sarah warned me about. Diana's eyebrows furrowed, but she nodded. I see. Diana stared at me, digging into my gaze to try and find some sort of answer in my eyes. However, I remained steadfast. I didn't want to worry her any more if James and I can handle it on our own. According to Sarah, we could. Diana sighed before turning to leave. All right. May today go smoothly. I nodded as she left. I hoped today would go smoothly as well. Another round of surprises would kill me. The minute I stepped into the library, Shadow turned from his scrolls to look at me. That was a first. Was he going to greet me properly now? His raised eyebrow threw me off, though, as if he wasn't expecting me. I walked to the center of the space, summoning my dark dagger and becoming mentally ready for my for more reactionary defense training. However, Shadow raised his hand to to me, causing me to relax a bit. Your training is over. What? W what did he mean? I opened my mouth to protest, but Shadow held his stern gaze. I have taught you how to defend yourself, and how to traverse a plane that renders you temporarily untouchable. That was all I was required to teach. You are free to train on your own without a mentor now. I felt like I was tossed into the deep end of a lake. I wasn't told anything about losing my trainer at any point. Still, I knew that what he was trying to say was the truth. He was right, I wasn't expected to learn how to really fight or how to beat someone. All this training was for was for was all this training was to give me the ability to defend myself. I completely forgotten about the reason I had even started. Still I wanted to learn more. I felt that I was losing a golden opportunity and I wanted to push forward to learn something extraordinary. It was one thing to duck and dodge an invisible opponent, but it was another to truly use dark magic. Shadow turned away and went back to the table. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must return to my research. We have a siege in less than three days, and I can't waste any more time. That hurt a bit. I was wasting his time? I felt some part of me yell that I had wasted my own time. Why was I even here? Teach me something else. Shadow looked over his shoulder, locking eyes with me. However, he didn't say anything. I could feel his gaze burn into my eyes, judging my words and my desire to learn. I wanted to know something. I didn't want my training here to end with me going off on my own. I'd only trained for two days, for goodness sake. I wanted more. Shadow slowly straightened and turned to face me, crossing his arms. Very well. I would like to see if you are able to perform a rather difficult spell. I suddenly became confused. Was it truly something powerful? I thought of a hundred things he was going to teach me, but I remained at attention, listening. The spell I'm about to teach you will become your best weapon in battle. However, it takes a large portion of energy. You may not even stay conscious after casting it. Are you prepared to try? I took a moment to consider it. While it seemed powerful, something about it seemed off. I could possibly pass out? Why would I essentially be jumping levels so fast? Was this something I should be afraid of? Yes. I wanted to know. I wanted to experience something new, and if this power was going to be, as he said, my greatest weapon, then I had nothing to lose. It would be worth the attempt. Shadow stared at me for a moment, most likely judging me like he usually did, before nodding and pointing to the wall away from the fireplace. There. I looked over and became lost. I saw my own shadow simply lying against the wall and flickering slightly from the firelight. What was he wanting me to do with it? Before my eyes, my own trainer's my trainer's own shadow crawled up the wall beside mine and began to peel itself off the wall. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was almost cartoon-like. Soon enough, a shadow was standing on its own in midair away from the wall. He was teaching me how to use my shadow? I closed my eyes, trying to focus and concentrate before looking to my shadow and attempting to will it off the wall. It wouldn't move, much to my displeasure, causing me to focus harder. It had to come off of the wall somehow. My shadow began to quake and almost shudder against the wall in defiance, making me glare hard at it. Come on. It shook violently before finally starting to push itself off of the wall into a full three-dimensional being. I stared as it settled onto its feet and stood at attention for me, as if awaiting my orders. 
This was by far one of the coolest things I had done. I felt my energy pull, straining slowly to maintain the spell, and took a breath. Shadow Heber, however, clapped his hands a couple of times. Well done, human. I grinned back at him before watching him form a dark sword in his hand and pass it to his shadow with a look of confusion. At his silence, I tried to mirror him, forming a shadowy blade in my hands the same way I had formed my dagger and passed it to my shadow. For some reason, staring at my shadow holding his horn seemed off to me, but maybe that was because I was human, casting this magic for the first time. There were always times for firsts, after all, and this was definitely an impactful first. Shadow lifted his hand and po pointed towards the door, obeying the silent command. His shadow walked over to the door and stood guard. How did it know? How did it know to do that without being told? Of course, Shadow wasn't going to tell me. I looked at my trado shadow. Shadow and tried to think of what I could have it do. There were met so many things it was hard to decide. Gazing around the room, there were so many places it could go. However, I became cur <laughs> curious about the upper level of the library. I pointed into the air at the upper balcony, feeling the need to verbalize my demand to echo through my body. Go. Without, within a blink, my shadow crouched and leapt off of the ground, almost flying through the air and grabbing onto the railing of the upper floor. I stared, jaw dropped, as it vaulted itself over the ledge and turned back to face me. Whoa. I looked to Shadow, seeing him give a mildly impressed smirk towards my shadow. I'm rather shocked. It's a shame to think that you're merely a human. You'd make a fine assassin. That was a genuine compliment. I was a little surprised to hear him say that without some kind of insult tacked on, but I quickly shook it off. If I had learned anything from this experience, it was not to let my guard down. Luckily, I didn't. I smirked as I noticed Shadow's own entity try and creep up on my shadow. In reply, I quickly shouted, DEFEND! My shadow acknowledged my command, and as if it knew where my enemy was, it turned and braced itself as my trainer's shadow tried to slice through it. Both swords clashed, causing a spark of dark matter to erupt from the impact, but as soon as it happened, Shadow dispelled his entity with a smirk of his own. Well done. Very well done. I grinned from ear to ear, my shadow disappearing on its own. However, Shadow raised an eyebrow. Your practice is not over. Again. I felt another smirk grace my lips. Finally. I trained through the day, stopping every now and then when my energy was low and refueling with food and a break. I was happy to have this new ability, but he hadn't been kidding. It definitely wore me out. I finally arrived at my room, but as soon as I entered, something wasn't right. I felt something was off just from stepping inside, but there was no one there. Was I just exhausted and imagining things? I cautiously entered, looking around. Nothing seemed to be out of place visually, but my nerves felt on edge. What was happening? Hello? Hello? It's me. Despite feeling silly speaking to an empty room, I had to see if anything, or anyone, would respond. Maybe they were hiding. Maybe something was creeping around and were surprised by my voice. There was no response, but I still didn't feel easy. Something was seriously wrong. Investigate it. I shipped my fear from my mind and took a breath. This was not something to be scared about. I was sure of it. I walked further into the room, only to hear the door slam shut. I turned around, seeing the door closed, making me panic a bit. Hey! Before I could walk over, however, I felt the energy in the room freeze. What? what I looked around, now unsure of what to think. Whatever was here had succeeded in trapping me, so I needed to deal with whatever it was. Baring my teeth, I stepped further into the room. I scanned the room for any movement. Who's there? What do you want? The voice that replied sent fear rushing through my body. I looked around to try and pin down the direction of the voice, but it seemed to just echo around the room. Who are you and what do you want? You meddle in things beyond your comprehension. Why must you attempt to toy with destiny? I remained silent for a moment. This was an angel speaking in English to me. I didn't know why it was speaking to me now. After they had attempted to wipe my memories and haunt me, still at least I would be able to learn more as to why. I glared into the room and continued to look around. I'm not toying with anything. James chose to stay with me, and he and I are going to be married. Raystor's fate has been set. You have no place in it. 
Before I could react, I felt myself becoming enveloped and changed. Great. I looked down to see my entire body wrapped in lines of white and gold chains, squeezing me tightly, and I winced in pain. Your mind is protected. But the spell will not last. Once it is faded, you will be properly cast. I got baptized in your can. No! Look, what is going on in there? I stared at the door, hearing James bang against it from the other side. The door was locked from the outside, too. I glared at the door before shutting my eyes and calling out his true name. Ray Strout! With a flash of bright light, James appeared into the room, shocked but suddenly enraged at seeing me in chains. Before he could rush forward to help me, however, his body was wrapped in chains as well. No! Well, I mean, uh, I'm fucking stupid. You cannot defy your destiny. My destiny? I pulled against the chains around me, hoping to somehow break free. Despite it being to no avail, I continued to thrash and pull. Your destiny is to rule this world. My destiny is of my own making! Your destiny is set in stone. The room around us began to glow and blind us, and we were forced to shut our eyes tightly. Gah! No matter. We will cleanse you both soon enough. I could feel the trains drag me beneath the ground into some sort of space. Cold waves rushed against my skin as I was dragged through a void I could not see. Where were we being taken? I didn't know how long I was out for. I had no way to tell how long I had been unconscious. All I knew was that James and I were in trouble. What was going to happen now that we were prisoners of angels? Nervousness sank into my mind as I couldn't do anything but float in the empty darkness created by the angels who had confined me in a cocoon of chains. Slowly, my nerves came back to life and I found myself awakening from the dark. What I didn't expect was to no longer feel chains around me, so that soft, familiar silk beneath me. What the? I rubbed my eyes and slowly opened them to see a familiar gray ceiling. It couldn't be, no. Sitting up, my heart caught in my chest. I was back in my room. I was in the human world. How was this possible? Where was James? I jumped out of my bed and rushed for the door, pulling it open. James? I called out, but heard no response. I rushed to the lobby and looked around to see it still intact. The air felt familiar and real, and I wasn't imagining things. I couldn't have been. At the same time, I knew that I had the curse hadn't been lifted. I couldn't have returned to the human world unless I died. Was I dead? I began to panic. What was going on? <gasps> my heart stopped at the sound of Diana's voice, more so from the moan that somehow reached my ears. I turned to where the sound came from, realizing the direction. The library? I rushed over and quickly opened the door, rushing inside. What I saw made my heart tear instantly into two. On the ground was Diana and James, both in demon form, embracing each other. James had his face buried in Diana's neck as she clawed at his back, arching against him and moaning into the air. That's awkward. This couldn't be real. This wasn't real. Before I could scream, time froze, causing the room and world around me to become still. I looked around, realizing that I could still move, and turned away from the sight. Do you know why I chose to be you? Cause you're a jackass? Fuck you. If this was the angel's attempt to prove something, it was sick and twisted. There was no reason to show me this. Especially when I was the one marrying... What? The one I was marrying was engaging with the woman who had wanted to take him away. This was the time when Maestro was destined to return to the Abyssal Plane. Isaiah would have convinced him to go home, and they would have consummated their engagement before returning to take their poor rats. Oh, they didn't, did they? No. It is the truth. The only event that stopped it from happening was your voyeurism and intrusion. I will not let him go. How selfish. Humans are all selfish creatures. But that is to be expected when Satan is damaging it. The angel was toying with me, and I despised hearing every word it spoke. I turned back around and focused my attention on James, knowing that this was fake and remembering the real scenario. Do you understand the full consequences of your actions? I regret nothing. Upon my final word, the room went black and began to reek of blood. I stared, started to gag and cover my mouth and nose at the horrid smell. What was happening now? Where did the angel take me? <laughs> I followed Diana's voice to see a crack of light slowly open, revealing Diana. Her face was pained with worry and concern, but upon opening her door, her expression shifted from concern to absolutely broken shock. 
From the light of the door, I was finally able to see the room I was in. Blood covered every surface, gore decorated every inch, and I was standing a couple of feet from the center where three objects laid. Barely coated in blood, at the center were two broken adult-sized crowns and a smaller crown, large enough to barely fit a newborn's head. Diana's eyes darted through the room, both in disbelief and in utmost horror. She barely forced herself to step into the room, dropping to her knees in front of the items and bringing them to her chest. No! No! My heart broke at the sight of Diana. Tears were streaming down her face as she clutched the crowns against her chest. Your selfishness cost a kingdom that beloved rulers, and a daughter her only family. I couldn't say anything. I wanted to fight and shout back that I still didn't regret taking James away, but seeing Diana completely broken silenced any will to speak. I see that you're beginning to understand. What's done is done. I remember Diana's voice echoing in my memory. She had moved on and was building the rebellion to eradicate the Demon Lord. As terrible as this was, this was the inciting incident that gave Diana the motivation to destroy the Demon Lord. I looked away from Diana, no longer wanting to see her grieve and glared at the ceiling. The past cannot be changed. The past is a reminder of our mistakes. The past is a memory to look back upon, not to bury yourself within. Before my eyes, the room vanished once again, and I found myself surrounded by flames. What the? <laughs> Great. Burn everything to the ground! I looked around, trying to find the source and the direction of the voice. This was just an illusion, but the heat of the flames seemed too real to ignore or shake off. This was the last thing many lives were forced to see before dying at the hands of the madman demon lord. Stop it! I gripped my head, shouting my, shutting my eyes tightly. I didn't want to see any more. I didn't want to be here anymore. If this was the angel's torture, this was truly unbearable. Do you not see the price of your selfishness? You are the sole reason why millions of lives have been lost. You are the sole reason why an entire world is burning. Your love causes death. Your love will do nothing suffering for all of eternity. Every minute you hold on to this false hope is another child dying, another kingdom falling, another battle waged. Give him up. All at once my head became filled with cries and screams of people I didn't know. Pain from women, men, and children echoed in my mind as I gripped at my head wanting it to stop. The heat around me was unbearable. I could barely stand it. I'm going to save, just in case. I mean, if it was me, I would say that I'm sorry. I couldn't take it anymore. I was plagued by visions of us separating. I was warned of why I shouldn't be with James. The more I listened, the more my heart painfully understood that this was beyond my control and this was something I should not have interfered with. I had to give up. I fell to my knees, feeling the flames around me fade away and be replaced by a room full of falling feathers. I covered my eyes and sobbed, feeling my heart dying. I loved James, but this was too much. I was only human, after all. A warm hand placed itself on my head, but I felt no strength to look up at who it was. You are a human. You do not belong in this world of darkness. May your sins be cleansed for all of eternity, and may the gates of heaven be open to you once more. I couldn't listen to him. My soul was fighting me. My mind was spinning. My body wanted desperately to stand. But I couldn't. My heart could no longer take the tragedy this road was taking me on. I needed to stop. I felt warmth envelop my body and a white light take over my mind. I felt my mind slowly dissolve all of my memories. Everything I went through. Everything I had done. Gone. And that's that for this episode of seduce me to the demon war so this was the bad end i'm guessing who knows but i will soon be back with the other end hopefully so if you're looking forward to that please stay tuned thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed please leave a like if you have something to say please leave a comment and if you would like to see more please subscribe and i will see you all next time